Things are not looking good for the people of Rio or the Rio Olympics because now there is not only an influx of crime, there is an influx of body parts washing ashore near the area where the Olympics are supposed to take place. Now, police near the Olympic Beach volleyball venue in Copacabana told the Associated Press on Wednesday that a foot and other body parts had been found on the shore. So let's take a quick look at the map, and you can see on the lower right-hand side of that map uh, is where the body parts washed up, and that's exactly where the beach volleyball venue is. Now, 10 people have been killed, and about 50 schools have been shuttered over the past nine days because of shootings triggered by the police searches. So um, earlier this month, there was a drug kingpin who managed to escape from a hospital. And uh, the reason why he escaped from the hospital is because uh, drug traffickers went in with guns blazing, literally, and uh, people died as a result of that, innocent people. Um, I should also add, though, that Ever since that, the crime has escalated even further because these drug traffickers are now fighting with the police um, over the fact that the police are trying to keep them under control for the Olympics. They're not going down without a fight. So I've never heard the word Copacabana without thinking of Barry Manilow. <laughs> and uh, the, if there's anything that is less Barry Manilow, it is a foot uh, washing up on shore. <laughs> So we got a little bit of irony there. Uh, I don't know if I'm the only one who noticed it. Okay, now, do you get to the heart of the story about how disastrous this is? I'm going to give you a couple points here that's going to make it crystal clear, and I'll mention some of them. But when I was a kid, uh, our schools would get shut down every once in a while because of a winter storm. You say, hey, snow, we just can't shovel mm -hmm. the. Their schools are being shut down because of killings nearby. So, ooh, that's a bad news. Mm -hmm. Uh, police would not confirm, confirm the death toll. You know it's bad news when the death toll is so high, the police will not confirm it. Okay, now, point number three. Rio officials, right before their Olympics, I've never seen this before. Usually they're like, it's wonderful, come to Salt Lake, come to this, come mm -hmm. to that. It's, yeah, uh, under the sea. Bah, bah, come bah, to bah, bah, right, like everybody's having a ton of fun. No. The Rio officials have declared it, quote, a state of public calamity. Yeah, I, actually, let me wow. give you an example wow. of that. People who are arriving to the airport near Rio um, are being greeted with a sign by protesters, police protesters. Mm -hmm. And here's what the sign says. Let's look at graphic number six. Uh, Welcome to hell. Police and firefighters don't get paid. Whoever comes to Rio de Janeiro will not be safe. Wow. Oh. I mean, wow. It's right. kind of incredible. You're talking about a city who that's always had a history of corruption, violence, government corruption, mm -hmm. and now the ones that are the good cops and the good people are not being paid and they're not being taken care of. So you're going to have more crime, you're going to have a ton of people down there, and it's just going to get even worse and worse. And I would be scared if I was, I mean, if I was an athlete, obviously you want to play in the Olympics, you want to compete, that's like a ultimate goal. but. I, I would skip Rio just like a lot of these athletes are doing. Yeah, and the coverage of the violence in Rio, you know, started as early as 2011 yeah. when um, the government decided to do what's referred to as like a pacification strategy, where you have a, a very heavy police presence in a lot of these favelas, and it's worked for a lot of the favelas, right? At first, they were very untrusting of the police officials. They didn't, you know, want them there, but then they realize, oh, well, there's a, a huge drop in violence, so this is great. But when it comes to some of the bigger favelas that have more uh, violence, I mean, keep in mind, these people are armed. They have, you know, assault weapons, and they're not going to go down without a fight. And they're angry about the corruption, they're angry about the poverty. And so you couple that with the fact that security forces uh, in Rio are severely underfunded and you don't have a good situation. I know the Brazilian economy is in big, big trouble, but you don't have to be a Rockefeller to help a favela. You're the worst. That's why you were grinning as I was trying to make a point. I'm like, why is he How grinning? I'm talking about that? something okay. serious right now. <laughs> it occurred to me while she was she talking. That. That's why I had to stop smiling. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, but, is he like being on a But even, even to, to your point about saying, you know, when the Olympics come, everyone wants to go to that city and go to that place. Outside of the corruption and what's going on with the police and everything, there's still a huge problem with the water down there. Mm -hmm. There's a huge problem, you know, this. I don't know if you've been been down to Rio and stuff, but you'll it, it's very beautiful. You you know you see the hotels, you see the beach. Literally, you drive five minutes and it's like complete slum. Yeah. 
it's you know so you have these people and when you have tourists you're gonna have you know pickpocketers and people that are doing other types of crimes and things like that I don't know I just I feel like it would be something to avoid but obviously the Olympic Committee is not moving anything and not hesitating to um, just keep it moving there on the schedule. That definitely it points to uh, the lack of corruption inside the uh, Olympic bodies, right? Because yeah. they chose Rio because it was obviously the best place. Who was it competing against Rio to get this? Was Chicago competing against? I think I think it was. was. It? Chicago was competing. Yeah, you can't go to Chicago. What the hell did they know about doing stuff in Chicago? You got to go to fucking Rio where they have they have a rape epidemic, yeah. right? They have drug epidemic. I mean, this is they have uh, 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 super bugs in the water, yeah. and 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 yet the Olympics. What I think that's where we should go because that would be the best play. I mean, it's beautiful. Look at the postcards. Yeah. Well, look, they do want to spread it out all across the world, and I get that, and 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 I I want to do that too. But there has to be a just a minimum level of. <laughs> Safety, you want to spread et cetera. Around the world? And uh, uh, and I know you guys want to blame it on Rio. Boo! Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll get back this to serious guy. points. Uh, so, look, people get on uh, Cuba because if you ever go to Cuba, uh, there's it seems like as Ben famously said, I don't know if it's so famous, but he said uh, it, it seems like the whole country needs a new uh, coat of paint. A and, lot of people say that. Yeah, yeah, right. So Cuba is in bad shape, obviously. But then what they don't talk about is. Yes, some parts of Rio are gorgeous, the ones we're familiar with, etc. But as Kenny points out, well, if you walk, you know, or you go like five miles out, five minutes mm -hmm. out, it's worse than Cuba. The favelas are a disaster, yeah. and and the same is true in a lot of capitalist Latin American countries. So when they say, "Oh, we're better off than Cuba," they mean some of us yeah. are better off than Cuba, and some of us are worse off. So this is not mm -hmm. a weird defense of Cuba. I don't think they should have communism. I don't think that's the right. Economic model. What I'm saying is, we should pay attention to everyone in the country. If you don't, sometimes you'll put on an Olympics and go, <laughs> "Oops! It yeah. turns out this is an absolute disaster." Because all those years, I didn't care about the people in the favelas. I didn't care to have economic justice in my country, and now it's blowing up on me. 